Hey guys, it's Lane with Tim's Nation. I'm here today to talk to you about the Death Guard list that I'm bringing up against DJ's Grey Knights today. Um, I played Death Guard several times on the channel before, but every time I play Death Guard, I'm usually running some kind of meme list. Uh, last time it was 120 box walkers, which we know is not even legal, but I wanted to run 120 box walkers. Uh, in the past, Whenever I built a Death Guard list, it's just been all vehicles because I run all the demon engines. Um, but this time I'm actually trying a competitive Death Guard build. Now I was putting this together and I put together three rhinos and painted them up. Uh, I did a whole bunch of Plague Marines and got them all WYSIWYG so they've all got the right weapons on them. Got the Plague Burst Crawlers. I, had, I also had some Death Shrouds in there and a few other things. And then um, I saw... The, uh, the list that Liam VSL took to uh, Worlds in Atlanta and did really well with it. It was basically the same thing as my list, except took out the Death Shrouds and a couple other things and put in three War Dog Brigands. So I'm going to try that with uh, what I've got here. So it's very similar to that list that was run at Worlds. Uh, a little different. I dropped one of my Plague Burst Crawlers so I can put in a Hellbrute because I just want to use that Hellbrute ability to tag uh, enemy units and put them into Contagion. So... But it's very similar. So we're going to go through this uh, as my attempt to stab at a legitimately competitive Death Guard army, not something I've done really with Death Guard before. It's also a new play style for me because we've got big 10-man bricks uh, of, of Plague Marines and Rhinos, and I don't really have a lot of experience positioning and playing uh, with transports delivering combat troops. It's a new experience for me. I do a lot of shooting. I do some fighting. But this is a new experience for me when it comes to making sure that I deploy now. Now, DJ's army doesn't have a whole lot of tank punching ability, so my rhinos are probably relatively safe in this matchup. But I need the, do need the practice in making sure they're, they're hidden, but they can also get out and deliver uh, that payload of Plague Marines at the right time and in the right place. So that's going to be something I'm, I'm working on for this game. Uh, so let's go through the list, take a look at what we've got, and we'll see how it plays today. All right, guys, this is my Death Guard. We've got a bit of a Rhino Rush going on here. Uh, so the list is going to start off with five characters. We have two of the Foul Blight Spawn. These are the guy with the Super Flamer that also gives their units fight first. And then we've got three of the Biologist Putrefiers. These guys let, the, let you do the grenade strat once per game for free, even if someone else has already done it. And they also give their unit lethal hits on five ups. Uh, so we're going to make sure that we're using these to, to hit and, and punch and do some damage to anything they target. Um, we will have three, or I'm sorry, four squads of Plague Marines today, two 10-mans, and also two 5-mans. The 10-mans are identical. They have uh, the, play, the uh, Plague Marine Champion, uh, who's got a Power Fist. I guess in this, uh, in this edition we're calling them Heavy Plague Weapons, and he also has a Plasma Pistol. And then we have a, uh, a Marine with a Plague Spewer. Then we've got four with the heavy plague weapons and four with the bubonic weapons. Really, um, these close combat weapons all come down to two things. The, the heavy plague weapons get three attacks. Their weapon skill is only four, but their strength eight, uh, AP two, two damage. And then the bubonic weapons, they are four attacks hitting on three. So you get more attacks and better weapon skill, uh, but their AP two, uh, strength five, AP two, one damage. So... You can take up to four in each squad, so we might as well take four of both. And these are really going to be focused on uh, uh, getting in there and, uh, and get crumping. Uh, I've got two five-mans. One of them is set up with the uh, the champion with the plasma and the power fist. Uh, then they're, they're a little more shooty. I've got a plasma gun and a um, well, I was gonna, the bite launcher in each of these. And then one of them has two... Uh, Heavy Plague Weapons, and the other one just has a Plague Spewer and a Bolter. So one is purely just for shooting, and the other one can get in and fight a little bit. I wanted to break it up into two five-mans, though, so I can get out and get on objectives and, and do actions and that sort of thing. Uh, as far as the characters, each squad will have the big ten-mans will have uh, the Foul Blight Spawn, so they get to fight first. And um, because each of those units has the Foul Blight Spawn with its um, Flamer Weapon and the Plague Spewer, they actually are a decent subject for the Overwatch strat. If someone's coming at with me with a a ten man squad, I might be able to pick up two or three of them in Overwatch and kind of reduce their ability to hit me. And then there's a Biologist Putrefier and the two big mans, and then the fighty uh, five man. The 
five man with a two play weapon. So again, the biology purifier is going to give these uh, squads lethal hits on fives and uh, I'll be throwing some grenades out there. Hopefully I don't forget about my grenades. I don't use them that often. So this is an army that's going to make me learn how to use grenades well. Of course, we've got three rhinos. Uh, kind of proud of these rhinos because uh, I really just took Imperial rhinos and gunked them up and made them disgusting and gross and filthy and death guardy. Um, they've definitely been blessed by Papa Nurgle. So there's definitely some conversion work here. Uh, one of these had started off as a, a Sisters of Battle rhino, and I wasn't able to cut off the Sisters of Battle emblem, the Fleur de Lis. So I just covered it up with, I actually had um, leaves from an old, you know, um, uh, GW uh, tree kit. And I put those on there and I used some Armageddon dust, the texture GW paint to kind of blend them in the, the sets of leaves into the, the, the hull a little bit and create gross seething pustules of fleshy bits growing out. And then some of those had tree branches on them and I kind of painted them red. So they kind of look like veins. So yeah, they're gross. Um, I also, because these are Imperial, uh, were originally Imperial rhinos, I didn't have any Havoc launchers, so I stole some bits from, um, the, uh, Desolation Marines, uh, their indirect fire, and I kind of made little Havoc launchers that are growing out of, uh, the hull of the rhinos, so kind of happy with how they turned out. If you've ever wondered if, uh, contrast paint works well on flat surfaces of vehicles, the answer is no, it does not. <laughs> I painted these guys with contrast. I used the, the Militarum Green contrast, as I did for all of my Death Guard. Uh, it looks great on most of the Death Guard stuff, but on the flat surfaces of the Rhino, it looks just gross and disgusting. I wouldn't use it on any other army other than, of course, the gross and disgusting Death Guard. But I'm happy with how these conversions turned out and some of the bits and bobs we put on there and the fact that we scrounged up some Havoc launchers from uh, some other parts. So three Rhinos. Uh, the Rhinos, I think, will be great uh, in the Death Guard because... They can drop off their payload, and then they can go score objectives. They can go do actions. But the other thing with uh, Death Guard is they can go and spread contagion range. So they can put um, enemy units further away into contagion range uh, so that my shooting units uh, can get, be get the benefits of reducing their, their armor. So next we've got two Plague Burst Crawlers. These guys always do the work. Um, I only have two of them where I could run three, but I really wanted the Hellbrood in there. But the Plague Burst Crawlers have their indirect fire. Those mortars are only AP1, so they're really going to rely on um, the Contagion range reducing uh, DJ's armor uh, today. So we'll see how they perform. I do have one Hellbrood. I love this old Hellbrood kit. It's an old resin model. I've uh, been around for a long time. Uh, it's just modeled with the twin heavy bolters and the power claw. So we're going to be using that. The twin heavy bolters have a decent range, so they will be able to tag I think it's 36 inch range. So they'll be able to tag enemy units far away and put them in a contagion range. Nice thing about the Hellbrute is he does do mortals on the charge. So he natively has uh, impact damage when he charges. So, um, you know, on a two up, he does D3 mortals. And you can pair that with tank shock because he's got a strength 12 power claw. So you can actually do a lot of mortals if he charges in. Uh, next, we've got some allies here. We've got three war dog brigands. Uh, War Dog Brigands, I never realized before uh, this past week, guys, but War Dog Brigands are really good. <laughs> so they are, um, of course, uh, little uh, Chaos Knights, and they are uh, OC8, which is always great. Uh, toughness 10, 12 wounds, and they have that 5 up involm uh, against shooting, against ranged attacks. But as far as their guns, they don't have any melee weapons, so to speak, but their ranged guns are really good because for some reason, these guys, their ballistic skill is 2 up. So they have the Demon Breath Spear, which is just a 24-inch Melta, but it's Strength uh, 12. Again, Blessed Skill 2, so hit on 2, Strength 12, AP 4, D6 damage, but it's Melta 4. So when you get within 12 inches, uh, it becomes D6 plus 4 damage. And then on top of that, you got the Avenger Chain Cannon. So 12 shots, again, Blessed Skill 2 for no good reason. Uh, so hit on 2, Strength 6, AP 1, 1 damage. And then their special rule is just that they get extra AP if they target the nearest eligible target. Now, a bit of tech that I didn't realize and I didn't come up with, but I, I, I gleaned off of watching the Art of War guys play these, is that if you put the Havoc launchers on these um, these War Dogs, then they have indirect fire. The, war do the, the Havoc launchers on the War Dogs are indirect. Uh, that can really mess with your nearest eligible target bonus for extra AP. For example, if you're shooting at the nearest eligible target that you can see with your, your Demon's Breath Spear and your Avenger Chain Cannon, 
there may be a nearer target that the Havoc launcher can shoot at because it's indirect, which kind of messes up which is the closest eligible unit. So uh, I'm taking the stubbers on these uh, so we don't have any, you know, if there is a nearer el eligible unit that's uh, behind a wall and I can't see with the other weapons, but the Havoc launcher has it, then I only get the extra AP in that nearer, nearer target. So we're just doing the stubbers on top of these so that we don't uh, mess anything up with um, uh, losing out that AP bonus on the nearest eligible target. And then, of course, we've got Nurglings. Uh, two squads of Nurglings. I got one unpainted squad of actual Nurglings and another squad that is not actually Nurglings. These were just little random Nurgle bits. I had that I put on bases in the last edition to use as markers uh, for raising banners uh, with my Death Guard army. Um, so they're not, they're only 32 millimeter bases, so not full 40. So I, I will need to get some more Nurglings. I don't have these ones painted yet, and for a very good reason. DJ was going to give me some, some, some crap about it, but no. Uh, the reason that these Nurglings are not painted is because I'm buying my daughter's Nurglings for Christmas, and we are all going to paint our Nurglings together, and then I will have Nurglings painted by my daughter's in my army, which just makes me, makes me happy. That is the list. All right, guys. So I feel pretty good about this death guard list um, with the fights first and the big 10 man bricks. And the fact that DJ does a lot of his damage with his, his uh, gray knights in combat gives me an advantage there. Um, and then the war dog brigands are so good at shooting. They've got good range and they've got solid AP and they're going to benefit from the fact that my death guard could make DJ's armor even worse. Uh, the rhinos, again, like I said before, I'm gonna, I need to practice into delivering um, close combat units using transports. So it'll be a good experience for me today. And I'm hoping to do some mortal wounds with those grenade strats. So I think the damage output will be pretty good. It's just a matter of making sure I, I move. The nurglings will be great for doing actions, but they are OC zero. So they're not going to score me any primaries. We'll need to do that with everything else. All right. Follow me over to the battle report, guys. See how these guys do. I think we're going to do pretty well today. I think it's going to be a close game. So let's check it out.